I'm gonna be upcycling this artwork slash canvas. I had gone to my local Goodwill, look in the art section, and I found this wooden frame, 16 by 20 canvas on the inside of it. It also has a really nice frame and a backing. My goal is to transform this $3.15 thrifted item to something that's worth well over $500. Let's go. He said under all that makeup, I said swear. My first goal was to take everything apart and clean up the mess of tape and wire. I removed the plexiglass, which was partially stuck to the painting and had to be pried apart with the strength of a thousand raging suns. PSA, don't do plexiglass on acrylic. Ever. On the back, there were these screws that were definitely way too large for this thin frame. So I removed the hack job so I can add better hanging options later. <sighs> After taking everything apart, we have four basic components. The frame, your plexiglass, the backing, the canvas with some sort of painting on it. It's a really textural painting. It's got a lot of cool elements to it. My apologies to... Jam. Jam? My apologies to... Jam. We're gonna breathe some new life into this painting and add something that's totally... My own style. In fact, I think I'm gonna make two paintings from this canvas and out of this backboard and just straight up attach it to frame. And that will make it its own piece of art. Is that even a good idea? I don't know. Now I'm just gonna completely forego this plexiglass. We're dealing with acrylic paint. There's really no need for this. I think it's time to get ideating and figure out what we're gonna paint. I was really itching to fix this frame and fill those gaping screw holes on the back. So I globbed on some wood putty on any areas that needed filling, sanded it, and then gave it a coat of white enamel paint to freshen up the color. When that was done, it was time to work on that canvas. Hi. This painting is incredibly textured. It's got bumps and creases and I'm trying to peel it off, but it's taking off all the gesso underneath. You're gonna have to go in with the big boys and get a sander. Sand the ever-loving heck out of this thing. And all was going well until it didn't. Whoops. Yeah, so that was an epic fail. I made a big rip just by sanding way too hard on one part of the canvas only. Well, this canvas is out. But we still have another board that we used from this frame, so we're gonna salvage the rest of my dignity and continue with that. Oh my god. Since we are switching gears to plain old backing board, I needed to get that gesso so I can do some painting magic later. I whipped up some homemade gesso from a recipe I found on YouTube and created a magical concoction to hopefully save my sanity. Two thousand years later. Behold, gesso. So I'm gonna take this little potion concoction that I've made and I'm just going to coat this screw- oh my god. Oh my god. I'm gonna prime this board, get it ready to receive whatever painting medium I decide to throw at it. And after 10 minutes of drying, this board was primed and ready to become art. I'm feeling I want to make a mixed media piece again, since I seem to have a history of making art on top of like, newspaper and books on this channel. And these dusty old books that I got from my husband's late grandfather were perfect for the task. I mixed some glue with water, grabbed a bunch of pages from the book, and paper mache them onto the board surface. Instead of waiting hours for my newspaper to dry, I used a heat gun I got from Hippie Crafter to help it dry faster. I was able to use the two heat settings to adjust how fast I wanted a particular area to dry. I really want to keep going with the two paintings thing so I can reach the goal that I had initially set for this video. I'm gonna make two paintings. Considering that this thing is busted, I'm gonna be using this as another old canvas that I just had lying around, so... Same Z's. Today was very productive. We're gonna wait for those to dry and then figure out more ideation ideas. It is the next day and we have dried canvases. This guy here was very warped this morning, so I put a bunch of books on top of it. Still a tiny bit warped. Maybe if I put a heat gun to the back and then put weight on it, that might work. We'll give it a few minutes and see what happens. 
Well, that sucked. After removing all the excess paper off the sides of the board, I added some texture onto each of the surfaces using modeling paste and this metal scraper I picked up from Dollar Tree. This was very satisfying. My board was still pretty warped from priming and paper macheing, so in a last stitch effort, I grabbed tape and any heavy equipment within arm's reach, secured all the corners and edges, and left it to sit like that overnight. And when I came back to check on it the next day, it was still warped. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. We just reached a new part of the project that is very fun and enticing. The painting part. I don't know what I'm doing. At this point, I still have no idea what I want to make, but that's okay. I just want to add lots of drippy paint and be totally spontaneous on the canvas because usually an idea will pop out at me once I do this. So at first when I was putting this together, I was like, why do these look so different? But then I realized that one has more modeling paste than the other. This one has way more, it looks a little bit more concentrated with the colors. This one here had less modeling paste, so it didn't absorb as much. Two different effects of the same painting technique, so it's very interesting. And very lucky for me, this is flattened out. I think the heat gun really did help with that. Now that the drippy paint has been applied and has dried, it's time to roll out the paint markers. I got this colorful marker set from Hippie Crafter that I was really excited to test out and try. My goal here is to add a lot of random lines and scritchy scratchies that would add a graphic feel to the background. I noticed that my paint wasn't totally dry underneath, so these acrylic markers were really struggling to leave pigment. So I decided to use my tried and tested Arteza acrylic markers instead. They've already been broken in from previous paintings, so sorry hippie crafter I didn't quite have the patience to break you in yet my style has been female faces kind of peering into the chaos I'm gonna figure out what female faces I want erupting from these pictures and then start painting again I'm cold. That's the lovely thing about New England Indian summers. Really, really cold in the morning, super, super hot in the afternoons. So you just don't know, don't what, know to what to do, what do with, with yourself. yourself. I have come to accept that now, and I am now in my hermit phase of life. Let's get drawing. And of course, to add to my never ending battle with this board, I could not, for the life of me, get the proportions right on this reference picture. I don't know what it was. The proportions, something was off. She's looking a little tired. Hopefully, a little pain will fix her up. <laughs> Just you wait. Yeah, you know, adding the paint really did highlight what was kind of off about all this, but I'll explain that later. It was actually coming together quite nicely and going on to the second painting with the canvas, that was looking even better too. That one really did not give me much trouble at all. But yeah, there's more, <laughs> so much more. So I'm really liking how these are turning out. I think I just want to do a few more little scribbles and embellishments just to add a bit more of a grungy texture. And here we are back on the easel. I was adding more contrasting colors and something still was not feeling good. And I figured out what was going on. It was her eyes. So we've reached kind of an impasse. Her eyes are just looking really weird. It's bothering me a lot. Eventually I figured out if I just close them, it should be fine. But now the portions are kind of off. I gotta figure out a way to remove some paint. Luckily, acetone will help with this. Ooh, she's cleaning up nice. Honestly, thank God this worked. Once I had everything in place, signed, and framed, we were now ready for the grand reveal.
Okay, these are looking absolutely fantastic. They're now up in my shop, ready to be taken to a brand new home. We had such good times together. Remember when you had your eyes half open and you looked like you were blind? Do you remember? Well, you don't remember anything. We had such great memories. Hope you enjoyed the painting journey and I'll see you all next time. Bye.